Hey folks, HDCG here and in today's video we're going to be covering all that is the 3 on 3 cup event that uh, Bandai have been running for the One Piece card game. So we'll get into what you need to do to sign up for it, what you need to do to be prepared for it, like practice coming up to it, things that you need to keep into your mind, just the, the whole realm of it. And then we'll deep delve into like the different rules for the 3v3. So we'll get into it. That's enough of me talking about it right now. Um, but let's let's yeah let's take a look at the website and i got a really cool new thing look at this look how fantastic this new cool transition is isn't that awesome i don't know it's in my face but i thought it was really really dope when we were coming for it um yeah i think my face is pretty okay there i am gonna move my chair on a tad bit though there you go you get to see all of me now so this is the one piece official web page here that you can see and as you can see this is the tournament that i'm talking about in the event section and the three on three cup is one that they announced a while back uh, if you do want to know if this is a tournament that you can sign up for you can see the locations here and the dates that they're coming up uh, so some of them in north america have already been completed uh with one going off in where is this? Jefferson Ave. I have no idea. I don't know what that is. The US. <laughs> Illinois? No. Maybe. Who knows? Um, but um, there are a few more coming. So we, as you can see here for it, the one that I'll be taking part in is the one that is based in the UK, uh, September 16th to 17th. So I will be there for that event uh, with my teammates, Joe and Adam as well. Uh, we've been practicing a lot. So we're re really excited about that. But these are all of the events. And if you do want to register, just go on here and it'll take you to the official uh, tournament here where you can sign up for the goodies, get your stuff in, get ready, prepare, take over the world um maybe not that last one but yeah you know what it is so to start out you're gonna need uh, a team right well you would think that um but actually they're doing a really cool thing with this event where you don't actually always need um to be joining the event with three people i'm just trying to find the section here da -da 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 -da. this is deck registration uh assigned da -da 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 -da. Ah, here we go. You may register as a solo player and you will be placed in a team with other solo players. So if you don't have uh, a locals, for example, or if you don't have, um, say you have 10 people who go to your locals and three of them have formed three teams, you're left out. Uh, doesn't mean that you can't join this event. You can sign up as a solo player and you will be given teammates. Um, the difficulty here is that then communicating <laughs> together could be a little bit difficult. So if you're a solo player going to this, I'd, I'd potentially say try and bring multiple decks. I don't know how they're going to uh, figure that out. But what is the idea behind the three on three cup? So it's very similar to a normal tournament, but the difference is you are three separate players playing against each other. And there are a few different rules that come into this um, and really cool stuff. So if you don't know, and if you haven't watched the channel for a while, I've played a lot of team events. I've topped a few, I've lost a few. Um, so it's definitely something that I've got a strong mentality and I've practiced a lot. So what is the three on three cup? The event type will take place offline between August and December, as we highlighted. There is a team event for three players. The members of the two teams pair off and battle. Uh, yeah, individual tickets for the people, solo players, like we said. We can cover the format here. So it's an offline tournament, which is nice. So nobody has to fiddle around with um, any of the cameras or anything like that. There's three players per team, which is nice, constructed. So make sure you've got your deck ready. Uh, qualifying matches. So it's a best of one. Uh, so. So like I said, each member of your team will play one game per round. Uh, you will be given 35 minutes per match and you get a max time of five minutes of overtime. Uh, if you don't know how the overtime rules are ruled, definitely um, check that up. You can look on this official website uh, and just look on this little rule section. Um, I will have a link to this website below. Um, I know it's different between every games. I still think it's like... 10, 1, 2, 3, so it's 0, 1, 2, 3, and or 5 minutes, whichever comes first, and then it comes down to like life, and if you're on the same life, it's like cards, and then cards and deck, and it's make sure you've read them before going into any official tournaments. Uh, top cut, there is no top cut. This is something that we've seen a lot with these uh, One Piece events. Um, it looks like it's gonna be a max capacity event. I saw someone the other day saying 1,000 players. I don't know if that's gonna be the case, but if it is, that kind of means that it can be even more difficult to top in these events. Um, and then before we go into the rules, I'm going to talk about a few things about preparing for your team and how to prepare for the event. So uh, when looking for teammates, one thing that I would say is no arguing. 
Um, that you need to be going with teammates who one have the same expectations um, for where you're going to place. Are they? Are you going with teammates who are going to be okay? Um, and by okay, I mean not angry at you. For example, if you lose uh, a matchup where that's basically topped you, cost you from topping. Uh, are you going with friends who are going to support you um, when you when you win, and people who are going to um, be very happy about the fact um, that you're all together at this event, or are you just going with people who are a to the game and uh, who want to win and only want to win? As a very competitive person and as a person with very competitive teammates, one thing for me before going to team events such as this is making sure that if we all got the right mindset, we would all like to top. Everyone on my team would love to top, but if we don't top, there isn't going to be any infight and we're here to support each other. We're friends um, and, and we all, we've all come together because we love this card game. So make sure that that's something that you have laid out. You've had those conversations. What does success look to look like for everyone on the team? And make sure that everyone's aware of that because it could be a situation where maybe you only want to play because you like to play for fun. Are you on the right team if you're playing with two members who specifically want to go very competitively? And that's a question that you should be asking yourself when looking for teammates for events like this. Uh, do you have all of the right resources? This is an in-person event, uh, and that means that you have to bring all of your own cards. Uh, everything needs to be there and ready. Make sure that you have the deck that you want. You, the, I imagine there's going to be deck registration um, for these events, so make sure that you, you know what's in your deck and you're ready for that, or that you've prepared some time for that if you haven't. Um, sleeves, you need to make sure that they're in top nick. New sleeves, I would advise for, and if you're using overs, I think you I think it's okay for overs for Bandai events. I haven't had big issues in the past for them, but make sure you're up to date again on these rules. Make sure you check in that rules section. So with that aside, um, let's take a look at some of the rules that are set out specifically for this. So determining the winner. So uh, teams are set out, like I like mentioned, with three different teams. Uh, a team wins by either having three wins and zero losses or two win and one loss. So that means that like all three of you have won, two of you have won, one's lost, that's fine. But what isn't fine uh, is if one of you won and two of you lost, or if none of you won and three of you lost. Now, one thing that is important, well, I mean, that's fine actually, losing games is fine, but um, what is important to make sure that you, um, you, you <laughs> is this little section here you're keeping aware of. If one of you lose, one of you draw and one of you win, both teams effectively lose. So that's something that you need to be aware of when it comes to the timing rules. As mentioned above, we are given 35 minutes with that five minutes of overtime. If you're practicing and you're finding that it's taking yourself a long time to get through your rounds, um, make sure you're trying to speed that up. Understand your deck better. Um, get yourself off that. The, the, the slowest deck in the meta right now um, that I've played against a lot would either be Law or Nami. So make sure if you're playing either of those decks um, that you're speeding it up as much as possible. And if you're playing against an opponent that you just immediately feel is taking even slightly too long, call over a judge. Um, so a lot of people can be scared to call a judge over, but the reality is um, you might be playing against someone who could cost your entire team uh, a win, which, because there's no top cut, could cost your entire team um, topping in general. So make sure you're being... Uh, on top of that because we don't want to see loads of these this is not what we want we would rather have clean cut we won or we lost not a but only if they played faster so make sure you're keeping on top of that so this is a cool section that um, i haven't seen them add before deciding the rankings so if you're often um finding yourself confused about tiebreakers or you're in locals and you've won three games and lost two games and you think you should be coming like fifth but end up coming third or ninth and lose out on prizing this is a section that's important um for you to like read on this is how they um sort out um this stuff like who's gonna win in the event of ties and stuff like that so this is the breakdown that it goes in it goes by victory points so usually how it breaks down is if it's a nine round event you get three points for winning and at the end of the event uh if there are two teams on 27 points then we'll go down to the next step, which is the tiebreakers, uh, opponent's percentage. So this is the average win rate of the teams that you've played against. So basically the answer is if you're tied both on 27 points, whoever played against stronger opponents who've had a better result on the day will win uh, and they'll get that. 
if that's tied, which is very unlikely, <laughs> we go down to uh, GW, which uh, the win rate within your team. Okay, so this is how many 3-0s did you have? How many times did you 2-1? Did you just scrape through that win, for example? Uh, and then it goes even deeper into that. But if it has to go past this, then that's crazy. Um, one thing that's important to know here, each team will be assigned numbers 1, 2, th and 3, that's each teammate. Uh, please register before the event and check these numbers are made up. One thing that's really important with this is they've added a specific rule here about being able to talk to each other, which is... Da -da -da -da. Let me find it. Where are we? Here we go. Team members sitting next to each other are allowed to give advice. Uh, players cannot stand up or talk to the members sitting apart. So, if I'm player A, on the left, I can talk to player B in the middle, but I cannot talk to player C on the end. Vice versa, player C can talk to B, and B can talk to A and C. So, what's important here? Your most experienced player should be B. Uh, should be in the middle, that person who's able to look on either side and is able to, one, make sure that you're calm, uh, taking it fine, and offer your advice if you need it. Um, as it specifically says here, that's an allowed thing. So um, I'm going to be double checking this when I get there just to make sure that I fully understand what this means. They may cover it anyway um, when we get to the event, but it's always important. Bar that, just make sure as much <laughs> and as difficult as it can be, you're not jumping over um, when you're, if you're a player A and you see uh, player C, his opponent do a misplay, make sure you're not the person to jump up and be like, oh, da, da, because that can actually just get you a game loss in a lot of events. Um, because it, it's written right here that that's not on you to do. That will be on either player C, should be catching that himself anyway, but player B in the meantime can say that's actually not on, on <laughs> to player C and then player C can call it. Um, I think that's how it's going. If it's not, don't take my word as gospel, but from what it says, um, yeah. So you may only participate in the tournament with team members you applied for. Please participate as a team, so make sure that that's staying the case. If something bad happens, reach out and see if you can change that. Decks used on the day of the tournament cannot be changed. Deck swapping between team members is also prohibited. Uh, yeah, that would be cheating. If you go into uh, game one and two and you're playing Zoro, but then you see that on the day there is a bunch of... Um, like Luchi or um, a bunch of the opposite end of the Zoro that's running so much removal for you or anything that you hate like Blue Croc for example uh, you can't then switch out to a deck that could deal well with those cards you have to run with the decks that you want now one thing I did want to mention is um, the different because the, so these are the specific rules for um, what decks must contain and what different one uh, a team cannot use more than one leader with the same card number so on a team, you can only have one Roro no Zoro player, for example. You cannot have multiple of the same one. Now, the question is, is this going to help or hinder your chances of playing against some of these more popular tier 1 lists? And I think I go back and forth on the reality of this. From my experience um, playing in a lot of team events, I tend to see a lot more players running uh, leaders that they're more comfortable with, that they have the more fun with when it comes to these events. And I do um, find myself, like for example, um, playing team events where I'm not going to be running into the same tier one deck over and over again because the chances of you playing against, for example, if I have a really bad matchup into Zoro, um, has now gone from like 45% of the room to an actual 45% of the room plus a one in three as well. So for all you know, your opponent playing Luchi, your, your teammate on playing Luchi in C might get the Zoro matchup, for example, um, and you may dodge a bullet there. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Uh, and what's important about that is your practice. How are you practicing? I would practice for this event exactly the same way that you would practice for a regional event, but the difference being I would work with my teammates to make sure that they're practicing at the same time, keeping yourself in check and making sure that you're looking through the top meta decks, playing through them, or if you're playing a leader that you're comfortable with, you're practicing against all those meta decks is very important. And one bit of advice that we've been working on as a team is trying to make sure that at least three weeks before the um, the tournament actually begins, that you are making sure that you've got a leader card um, that you're 100% set on, giving yourself actual time to make sure that you can practice with your deck and you're not swapping and changing constantly is quite critical to your success in the future. So other rules, um, so each player deck may contain up to four cards with the same card number and the combined decks of, combined, combined decks of, um, 
player team may contain up to 12 cards. Uh, under the rules, players uh, may include any number of pacifists. I just got subscribed to mid-video. Thank you very much, Fantasy Punch. Um, <laughs> so what does this mean? This means that if your team, for example, is Zoro, Whitebeard, and Law, and all three of you want to run four copies of Nami, you can't. Um, so there was some conversion before all of these rules were out being like maybe it's going to be limited to just four cards on a team and that might, that might actually stop us from facing all of these red cards and all of these red decks uh, but that's not the case. As long as you're keeping to basic standard rules you're perfectly fine. Um, play it whatever you want to do. So I've talked a lot uh, but let's get into the actual exciting things really. So these are the events but these are the prizing. So what you get for showing up? Um, you get event pack 2 uh, and event pack two is this, and you have the Raizo, Sasaki, uh, Suro, Sanji, Monkey D. Luffy, and General Frankie in this. And although it says 1x, that's one per team member as well. So on your team, you'll receive three of these effectively, one for each team member. Uh, and then if you get top 128, you get one of the Don Card Pack Volume 1 X1, which is this one with the Oh my god, I can't breathe. Uh, with the Luffy one, I believe this is the Usopp one, Sanji's one, uh, Brooks one, and I believe this is the Robin one as well. Um, so you get one of those if you stop 128 as well. And again, that's once per uh, team member. Top 64, you get yourself one of these fancy choppers. Very nice. Very, very nice. Top 16, we get the Usopp that we see here with the three on three cup stamp that you can see here. If you get top six, you get your hands on this very, very fancy and very expensive Rowan Zoro. And then coming up to second place, you get the chopper again, Usopp, the Zoro, um, and the Monkey D. Luffy cereal. If you haven't seen this, you need to see it because this is beautiful. Um, and then for first place, you get everything just mentioned then, but you also get another event pack on top of that too. Now, um, what is the difference here? Well, it's actually been announced that the one in Glasgow, I believe, if I look on, now we're looking at Discord, and that's the question. Uh, can I see, where is it? Announcements. Let's see if we can view. Here we go. Just a quick note that the 3v3 update has been awarded to the top two and stuff like that but i also saw it being talked about um, that there might be increased pricing for like this event um so make sure that you're checking up in the discord channels to make sure that you're aware of it now one other thing that you may not have paid attention to as a team and you should definitely sign up for is the side events there are going to be chopper side events at these events make sure you're signing up for those as a team because those have some fantastic pricing and also it can give you an offer opportunity to potentially top have more fun as a team and be able to play more of this card game that we love um, that's the video i'm hoping that it was able to give you some insight on the 3v3 how to prepare for it a little bit uh, and to be cringy i know a lot of people say you've got to go and you've got to have fun um, but for me find out what fun means to you and make sure that you're trying to reach that goal um, before you go there cringe over i hope you have a great day and peace